Hi everybody! In this video we're going to be estimating a population standard deviation. So previously we've done similar things but we've estimated a population proportion and a population mean. So we're just um, transitioning our focus now to standard deviation. Okay so first we're going to find critical values for the chi-square distribution. So a chi-square distribution is the following. If a simple random sample of size n is obtained from a normally distributed population where the mean is mu and the standard deviation is sigma, then chi squared, so this is a Greek letter chi, squared equals our sample size minus 1, so n minus 1, times the sample standard deviation squared over the population standard deviation squared. And this has a chi squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And so characteristics of the chi-square distribution. One, it's not symmetric. Two, the shape of the chi-square distribution depends on the degrees of freedom, just like what we learned when we were looking at the student's t distribution previously. Three, the number of degrees of freedom increases, and when this happens, then the chi-square distribution becomes more nearly symmetric. And so we'll see a figure on the next slide for that. And then four, the values of chi-square are non-negative, so they're greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so here's an image for us. And notice if we start with a small amount of degrees of freedom, the blue line is two, all the way up to the purple line, which is 30 degrees of freedom. And so notice for the purple, we have this nice symmetric, normal looking curve. Okay, so our first example. Find the critical values that separate the middle 90% of the chi-square distribution from the 5% area in each tail, assuming 15 degrees of freedom. So 100% would be all of the distribution, and so 5% in each tail gives us that missing 10%. Okay, so step one. This figure shows the chi-square distribution with 15 degrees of freedom and the unknown critical values labeled. Okay, so we don't know what these chi-squared uh, values are. <clears throat> but we do know that on the left, the left tail, this is going to be 5% of the area under the curve, and the right tail is the other 5% of the area under the curve. And in the middle here is the uh, remaining 90%. And so we denote that critical value as chi-squared sub 0.5. This is really similar to what we did with our z-scores and our t-distribution as well, our t-values. We had the subscript letting us know about the area to the right of that value. So that's the same thing happening here. And so the area to the right of the left critical value, this one here, is the whole area, which is 1, everything under the curve is 1, minus this area to the left, which is 0.05, giving us everything to the right of this critical value is 0.95. Okay, so we denote that critical value, that's why it gets the subscript 0.95 over here. So then, this figure shows a partial representation of our chi-square distribution table, which you can find in a textbook or online. And so we look for the row containing 15 degrees of freedom, and then the column, we find that based on the area to the right of 0.95 for our example, and um, 0.05. Okay, so we wanted two values, so that's why we have two columns highlighted, and we line those up with our degrees of freedom row. And so the critical values for the, um, the, the leftmost number, if you recall, that was the 0.95 down here for the subscript, that's 7.261. And then that right tail, that right 5% of the area, that one's going to be um, a chi-square value of 24.996. And so next, let's construct and interpret confidence intervals for the population variance and standard deviation. So a confidence interval for our standard deviation squared, remember we've seen this before, but uh, 1 minus alpha times 100% is the level of confidence we're looking for as a percent. <clears throat> and so if a simple random sample of size n is taken from a normal population, the mean is mu, standard deviation is sigma, then a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for our population standard deviation squared 
is given by our upper and lower bounds here. And so we've seen upper and lower bounds um, before. These are a little bit different than what we did with population proportion and population mean because we're not adding and subtracting our margin of error like we did back then. But our lower bound is just going to be our sample size minus 1 times the sample standard deviation squared over our chi-squared value um, with the area to the right of alpha over 2, whatever that is, depending on our confidence interval. And then very similar for upper bound, but notice that you say 1 minus that alpha over 2 to find your chi-square value. Okay, and so we find those using our table and knowing our n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So to find a 1 minus alpha, 100% confidence interval, about our population standard deviation, sigma, take the square root of the lower bound and upper bound. Okay, so here's our example. This table shows the sell price of 12 randomly selected six-year-old Chevy Corvettes. Construct a 90% confidence interval for the population variance and standard deviation for the price of this car. So we have 12 randomly selected values here. So first step one, a normal probability plot and box plot indicate that the price of Corvettes could be normally distributed and no outliers are present. So we're not going through this, but we checked this previously when we were talking about um, population mean. So this was our option for checking that our um, data was going to be normally distributed. So you can create the box uh, plot and the probability plot to verify this, but um, we're just skipping that now because we did that in the previous video and just saying that that's going to be valid. Then the sample standard deviation, we can compute that and we would get $2,615.19. And so the variance, remember that's just your standard deviation squared, so it's just that value squared. Okay. Now because we want a 90% confidence interval, we have alpha equals 1 minus the 0.9 the 90%, which is going to be 0.10. So we go to our table, and I'll pull that up in just a second, and we know that we want our sample size minus 1 for our degrees of freedom. So it's going to be 12 minus 1, so 11 degrees of freedom. And we're going to find our left critical value to be the um, 1 minus alpha over 2. So we start there, we say 1 minus 0.1 divided by 2. So it's going to be 0.95, and that's going to give us a chi-squared value of 4.75. So let's take a look at the table real quick. Okay, so here's a chi-square distribution table. And so the degrees of freedom are the rows, the area is the columns, and then the um, critical value is what's within the table here. So that's what we're looking for. So for us, we are focused on 11 degrees of freedom, and we want the critical value corresponding to 0.95 as the area to the right of the critical value. So if we line that up with row 11, that's going to be the 4.575. And now while we're here, let's also get the other value we need, which is going to be um, corresponding to 0 0.05. And so that's going to give us the 19.675. And so like we got from the table, for the right critical value, Alpha is 0.10, divide that by 2, that's why we were looking at 0.05, and we got the 19.675. And so then we substitute into our formula to obtain the lower bound, so n was n minus 1 is 11. Uh, we computed our, uh, we can get the sample standard deviation using um, a calculator or software, we got that earlier. And then our chi-squared value, we figure that out from the table and that was 19.675. Plug that all in, pretty big number, 3,823,705.52. The upper bound, really similar. We got our chi-squared value from the table, and we get 16,444,023.19. And then we take the square root of each part, so we want the square root of this, so that's why it's so large, we still have to take the square root, and we get that the lower bound is $1,900.55, and the upper bound is $4,055.
And so you can do the same thing in StatCrunch. We did it all by hand right now, but we have our 90% confidence interval, our sample variance, degrees of freedom, our lim uh, lower bound and upper bound, and then um, StatCrunch gives confidence intervals for the variance. And so we determine the square root of the lower and upper bounds or limits to find the confidence interval for the standard deviation. Just like we did by hand, we still have to take the square root here. And so we get the same lower bound and upper bound that we got by hand. So let me take you over to StatCrunch real quick and just show you how to get these values. Okay, so I'm in StatCrunch. I inputted our data um, information from our table. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Stat and go down to Variance Stats for one sample. I'm going to go to With Data. Okay, so I'm going to select our column, what we have our information in. And we know we're looking for a 90% confidence interval, so I'm going to change that to 0.90. And let's go ahead and just look at it like this. And so this is what we saw just a moment ago. Now, this time I'm going to just do a little bit more with you. Um, I'm going to store this in the table. Okay. And then this way we can do the square roots that we need uh, just right here in StatCrunch. And so what I'm going to do is I need the square root of my lower bound and the square root of my upper bound. And so we're going to go to data, compute, expression, and we're going to build an expression. So I need square root. So I'm going to scroll down here to S and go to square root, add that. And we're taking the square root of the lower limit or lower bound. So I add that. And then I'm going to go ahead and call this my price lower bound. Okay, we'll compute that and notice what we got. We got our $1,955. And so we can do the very same thing for the upper bound and we'll get the um, 4,055 value. Okay, so that's how we can do it in StatCrunch. Okay, so our interpretation, we are 90% confident that the population standard deviation of the price of all six-year-old Chevy Corvettes is between $1,955 and $4,055. All right, so that's it for this one. Take care.